This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found on Gadget Geek show, show number 356, recorded on May 24th, 2018. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that we News reviews, front updates, and conversations. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the Average Guy Studios in Bellevue, Nebraska. That literally, Mike, we went from winter at the beginning of May to summer here at the end of May. Like, yeah, zero spring. There was no transition. Hey, you want to be, you know, 20 degrees or 90? No difference. Not yeah, it was so crazy. I went out for a bike ride on uh, Monday. And I, um, it was really, really nice. It was maybe that was the one day of spring. It was like 72 degrees. It was beautiful. No humidity. Tuesday, uh, 90 and hot and humid already. And it's like, holy crap. So we're in the throes of summer. I know probably where you're listening, unless you're down under, uh, you are probably headed into summer as well. And so we have a lot of hot weather to complain about, at least coming up for the next couple months. Of course, you can catch... All the show notes for this show, and there'll be a few of them out there, out at theaverageguy.tv. Don't forget, you can subscribe using our mobile app, easiest way to probably listen to us on the road if you want to do it live. Many of you are doing it, and you just head out to homegadgetgeeks.com. Download the app for free. You can listen on the road, after the fact, whatever. It's out there for you. I'll replace that. If you if you wait, oh, I don't know, three, four, five days afterwards, you can use that app. I replace the video or the audio, the live audio, with edited audio. And so you can catch it out there as well. So get it and download it. Don't forget, if you're on Apple, uh, if you're in the Apple Podcast app, you can subscribe, rate, and review right from there. Nobody ever does, and it's okay. I'm not hurt or offended that you. Nobody ever rates or reviews this podcast. It's okay. I'm not bitter about it at all. <laughs> but if you want to, you can. I'm just saying it'd be nice. Subscribe if you're on YouTube. Subscribe. Uh, we have two channels, by the way, on YouTube. We have a live channel and we have a recorded one. Subscribe on both if you want to know. If you want to know when we're going live, subscribe there. If you want to know when I drop the recorded version, subscribe there. But get one of those subscribed. All right, just get it done. And then uh, like a bunch of you have, so appreciate that. And then if you listen over in Spreaker, you can do what you do over there. We want to thank Michael Librant for coming on two weeks ago. Last week, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, Mike. I got to Thursday. <laughs> I said, I don't want a podcast. <laughs> like I was, I was just, I was tired. Like it's, you know, it's one of those, I'm sure you have this probably even more now than ever, but all my, all my children, my interns arrived at Gallup last week. And you got 15 of them. That's way more than I have. So I got 15 new children yeah. Yeah. all at once. And I just didn't have the energy. So I appreciate you guys letting me have the week off. Uh, I now, Mike, I know how you feel now. You probably feel this way all the time with having a couple at home. You're like, oh dude, I just want to sleep. Like nine o'clock you're in bed, right? Most I just nights. miss the ability to just on the weekends to say, I'm going to take a nap. You know, like you just can't do that. You just can't like, oh, I'm going to take a nap or, you know, I'm going to go to bed early tonight. It just, it's not an option. It's yeah, no. And I still have that option, but I don't, I need to do it more. It's just yeah. anyway. So I appreciate we took last week off. I just, cause it, you know, when you create a podcast like this, it's not just an hour or two or even three on Thursday nights. No, it's another two hours of video of the video editing getting it uploaded, putting it all in the right places, getting the audio done, writing the show notes, getting it posted, posting to all the different sites we post to. And so, you know, you've done this before. So it takes, you know, I'll, I podcast with Dave Jackson from 930 to 11, and then I would do a little bit before and a little bit after, and all of a sudden your whole morning's gone, you know? Right. And so by not podcasting on Thursday, I actually get my Friday nights back and I get my Saturday, not all of the mornings back, but I get little bit of that Saturday back. And so it is nice when I take a little downtime, it is nice to get that weekend back and have that time. So if you're listening and you're wondering where the heck were they last week, or you're just playing catch up, that happens too. I know many of you um, are behind in your listening. I uh, appreciate uh, you guys uh, giving me the week off. Don't forget, we'll, we got a little crypto conversation. We'll catch you up on that. I know a lot of you don't listen to that and um, uh, we're going to still do it. So it'll be out there if you if you want to follow along what's going on. Actually, some big news from me and a little bit from Mike around crypto. So if you want to stay around for the post show, we'll talk a little bit about that. I know even a lot of the live listeners might kind of drop off. 
some in- I've got some interesting things, I think, to say about crypto tonight. So stay around and listen in the post show. All right. Uh, let's dig in a little bit. One of the things I do want to um, let people know, if you haven't, and I know a lot in our community, have this NVIDIA Shield. And so if you have one of those, new update available. There's a new UI. Um, I think you got to go get it and bring it down. It'll probably update automatically if you don't do anything. I don't use mine very much, so I'll probably need to pop over there and get that. But Android Oreo is out and the update's available. Uh, if you've got a Shield, and I know a lot of our listeners do, uh, go out there and uh, and check that out. It's supposed to have kind of a new UI associated with it. And, of course, it's always – Android always does things perfectly. No, they don't. And, you know, so you will be – although uh, they have a lot better track record than Windows, apparently, um, these days. So check it out. Mike, do you – do you do a shield? Or I don't, you... but I was going to, so I'm an Xbox one guy. That's our main hub in our living room, you know, for all of our apps and stuff like that. So what do you, I thought the shield was your main media device. No, in your living well, room. it's going to make it that, but Sarah won't, she won't really leave the media center until it doesn't work anymore. Like okay. she knows it, it works. It's recording. I still get guide data. Right. Like it works. It doesn't like Plex still does some weird things on recordings. And uh, the the Xbox or the uh, the media center just does it like it's supposed to, ninety five percent of the time. Right. So she's not going to move until I mean I've told her she's, we're going to have to move at some point. Like you're this is your next move onto the onto the shield. Okay. Well, but I'm not going to move until, you know, until I have to. Right. Um. So yeah. So Tony says they're on the shield with the PS View. Uh, wife does well with it. Yeah, I have no problems with once we move to it, she'll be fine. She just doesn't want to learn something new. She's just like, nope, this is where I want to be. It works. And I'm I'm fine with that, actually. It's sitting there waiting, ready. Uh, yeah, and the fine. Plex client on the Xbox actually has a lot more problems than every other device. So it cannot do direct play and direct stream for any TV recorded stuff. It just doesn't work. Um, so you have to turn that off. And there's still, like you said, with TV, it's still not perfect. That's one of the reasons we still love YouTube TV is because now we can just use their DVR. It's unlimited. You you know you're not going to have anything wonky. The only thing you're missing out on is uh, commercial skipping. Yeah, and forty bucks a month. True. Yeah, only forty dollars a month. Not bad. I don't think. Yeah. For cable channels and your local and unlimited DVR. Yeah. You know, I um, I bumped my Cox to unlimited uh, a couple months ago because. We were running a ton of crypto stuff and storage and um, burst. Nah, burst isn't really that intensive, but storage for sure. Yes. And then Saya was doing some weird things. And I, I got close and I ended up paying almost as much as I would for an unlimited plan. And the extra, you know, and the extra it was like 100 and actually, I think I did pay more. To be honest, I think I paid more. Because they're expensive. I know. It's $10 for a 10 gig over or something like that. I think 10 for right? 50 50 right right and i blew through it man it was like i i did so i took the unlimited plan and then in um in for april i ended up doing uh, about 3.7 terabytes of bandwidth on the unlimited plan yeah storage and and sia were just cranking plus we'll talk about this a little bit later i upgraded my backups to backblaze and i've mentioned that here talk about that here in a little bit but that was so that was getting 1.5 of that is getting all my backups up there as right. well but um so i've been watching the trend and now i'm trending under 500 gig so it's kind of like well i i think i'm probably going to call call him and downgrade back to the regular plan um that stores i have really calmed down they were doing a lot of testing and so they were they were sending out packets of storage that didn't they weren't real but they were real if that makes sense like they weren't they, they weren't customer data they weren't actually data from customer storing it was them running tests and so they were creating this artificial data and sending it on the network to do some testing and stuff well man it was chatty and so paying an extra 50 bucks a month for unlimited is nice i don't have to worry about it all of a sudden, I don't care what, what what movies we watch or how many we download. Right. You know, um, I, I've been thinking about doing that on my Verizon because I know you're on Sprint and you still have unlimited, but we don't. And it wasn't an issue until Emmett. <laughs> we're, we're, we're 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 we've turned into the typical parents that if Emmett is like crying on a car ride down to the farm, it's like, hey, get Daniel Tiger out and stream Daniel Tiger, right? But like, we didn't realize we are now blowing through our eight gig 
limit. It's not much when you start streaming those. So I'm like, eh, we might need to go to the unlimited. That Verizon what's the, what's the price difference? See, I don't know. I need to check into that and see what the difference would be. I know that the one thing I didn't like about it was on the Verizon Unlimited, they do not allow you to use a corporate discount. So if your company gets like a 10% discount, it they won't apply that to an unlimited plan. Okay. I don't think it's too much more. I'll probably just end up switching to it. It's probably worth it. Just to not even have to worry about it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things you kind of think I could I could set up my phone as a hotspot and run all that crypto stuff when it's getting intense, you know, run it that way. Right. And because that's uh, that's unlimited and take it back. I don't know. It, it's 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 been an interesting question. I think this is where we fall into this weird like 50 bucks is not, I mean, hey, 50 bucks is 50 bucks. But to have that peace of mind, like, hey, I don't ever have to think about my bandwidth again. I mean, I went years that way. And then, they, you know, Cox did the the one terabyte plan. And I thought that was going to be enough. But as we've tried this crypto stuff, um, I blew through those. Quick. Yeah. No, I and you can't, the problem is you can't control those services. Like you can't, yes, you could say, okay, I'm only going to give it 500 meg. Well, first of all, you won't make anything on 500 meg. You got to give it terabytes. And so like, you know, I probably gave it 16 terabytes of available space, not thinking like, holy crap, if it actually tries to use all that. Yeah. You're going to start blowing through stuff. And on top of that, with Cox, where you and I live, we only get about 10 meg up for our upload speed. And if your file services start eating up that, like try to have a FaceTime call or a video call or do a Skype or podcast with any of that stuff running and it, it, it chokes it. If we had gigabit, you know, it wouldn't be a problem because it's not going to throttle that upload speed. Right. Right. But it gets yeah. really hard when you have all these things competing for that 10 meg up. That's a, that's not a lot of bandwidth to play with. No. And I'd come in, I'd have to check, like I'd check my phone. Okay. What's running? What's uploading? Do I got to, you know, do I got to shut some things down? Do I need to turn some things off? just so I could podcast. That wasn't even right. a bandwidth issue. And now then thinking like, okay, you know, I feel all of a sudden I feel super European. Like I have to keep track of every single thing I'm doing, you know, yeah. to make sure. So it was, I don't know. Um, certainly that bandwidth has slowed down. I still have those two services. I still have Saya, although Saya is broken at the moment. I, I put it in the, the new Bitdefender box, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. And it, I cannot get Saya past it. It just, it'll, it comes on and then it says it can't reach the server anymore. And I've done port forwarding and all that stuff you're supposed to do. Whatever reason it's stopping it. So we'll talk some more about that in post show as well. But so, um, yeah, I've got a kind of decision, you know, it's like, Hey, do I kind of, I think, you know, midway through the cycle. So I got a couple of weeks before I need to do anything, but I think I may call them and drop it back down to the $90 level, which is still pretty expensive. Uh, some of you listening have, shared with me you get way more for less than that that's what i've heard too yeah, yeah. it's a little frustrating when you tell me that by the way <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, not a good thing we used to have such good pricing but I know. It's, it's just not there and even CenturyLink, who's supposed to provide some kind of you know competition doesn't not out here in bellevue no. and no. not out here in elkhorn either okay. yeah they're not so well, so there's some things going on with that. If you've got that NVIDIA Shield, yeah, it's been a slow time for, for media servers. Just th whatever's out is out. And uh, there's some, there hasn't been a lot of new stuff out there, but um, get that updated to, to Oreo if, you, uh, if you've got one of those. One of the things, uh, just a side note, we won't spend a lot of time, but this, there was a service I used for uh, quite a few years called StumbleUpon. And it was Back I in love the stumble upon, yeah. that was like oh, in high school we all had our laptops in high school, and uh, once someone discovered stumble upon, that was <laughs> that was the killer of a lot of people's grades in high school. <laughs> well, it was an era of, um, you know, content discovery on the internet was like the radio. You would just right. you would you you would randomly try to find things. And Mike, do you think have your habits have your surfing habits changed in the last five or six years? And where do you think, are you still like randomly looking for things no. or, yeah, wh why do you think that's changed? What do you think? That's a good I'm point. I, I mean, I have my standard stuff I need to go to. Yeah. I have, and I think it's because our social media sites feed us that random bits that we need, right? Like we don't need to go searching because we find random videos on stuff. Like you scroll through your feed and you see interesting science videos, you see a bunch of different stuff. So I don't think there's really the need. Social media has, has like curates that stuff now for you. Whereas we didn't have that before. Yeah. So stumble yeah. upon was it. 
Yeah, it was. I think that was a precursor to a lot of the Facebook and the Twitter and some of those fe- those socially aggregated feeds right. where we get it. We're getting them from our friends now, which is good and bad, <laughs> you know, uh, as we learn the same the- stuff over and over, though. It's it's hard to find that really unique stuff to stumble. It is. If you can get something to go viral, it gets amazingly viral. Yeah. But if you it's not like we're, I don't think the Internet is as spread out as it used to be. Um, and so we're kind of, we're kind of, it's, it's what allowed the 2016 election here in the United States to go awry like it did, because we're so, if you, you make an influence on Facebook or you make an influence on Twitter and you really only have to attack one or two surfaces to get that kind of, of exposure and that kind of manipulation going, right? It, where before, okay, you're gonna have to really do some work to get you know, in a world where things weren't aggregated on social, you, uh, you didn't have to worry about that as much. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to hear debate good or bad. That's just what it is. And so I too have was thinking like, how do I get my news? Yeah. And it, it's a random Twitter or Facebook thing. That's really yeah. the two. Wall Street Journal where I log in every morning. Um, right. That's like my financial news, my market news. News app on my phone. I'll go to in the morning sometime. Do you use that? I do. I should check I mean, that out. What's there? Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it is there, and I have I haven't really used it. Kind of keeps me up to date on what's going on politically. I check the market. I check, you know, Christ of Bitcoin, some of those kinds of things, and that. Right. Check it once a day. Um, there's plenty. We have plenty of TVs around Gallup where you can see the news all day, so you can pop by and kind of see. The other thing, you know, I've subscribed to some news like channels on Facebook. I'm sorry, on YouTube, and so I get alerts whenever they have a new video out. Yeah. So I'm finding, you know, I've been, uh, I don't know if, uh, I don't know about you, but I've been following this, the Kilauea, uh, you know, volcano, the, you know, the eruptions going on in Hawaii right yeah, now. Yeah, my buddy fall. is actually flying to Hawaii today. I'm like, really? Yeah. Well, hopefully he's I not know. going to the big island. <laughs> no, he's going to Maui, I think. <laughs> Good. Yeah, the big island is a mess. Um, uh, and so I've been getting some news from those interesting niche news sources uh, just on YouTube. And so every day I check my YouTube feed. You know, I watch my crypto update on YouTube. I I follow this family that's building a timber frame house in Idaho on YouTube. I get, um, you know, I look for, uh, I've been watching this channel called Honest Trailers, which is just super funny. It's this movie voice guy, movie voice guy but he, it's it's like, you know, he tells you kind of the real funny stories about the about the movies. Okay. Instead of, yeah, it's called Honest Trailers. It's it's, it's pretty funny. Like it takes every movie and just kind of chops it down. Um have you but, ever watched Philip DeFranco? Uh-uh. Oh, no. Philly D is pretty good. Yeah. If you want um he brings the news. Uh he brings pop culture news a lot, but he do, brings the big stuff too. He you're gonna think that he's like a joke at first the first time you watch him, then you'll realize he does a really good job. Um, but he does it in more of an entertaining way, a way yeah. that especially the younger generation can watch. Is that like a John Oliver style then the, the way he's doing it? Have you ever watched John Oliver? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I haven't watched John Oliver that much, but from what I've seen, yeah, it does seem. Yeah. I like Oliver, but anyways, back to the point we're getting, I'm getting those through aggregations on, so on social YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. So goodbye to stumble upon. It's off yeah. those, a lot of those sites were gone a long time ago. But it's been online for 16 years. It's impressive. Isn't that crazy? It's a good run. Yeah. 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 I wonder how many users they were getting at the end, though. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think they had at their peak, they were at 40 million users. Okay. It was just like um, Dig. Did you know Dig? Did you know yes. the site Dig.com? Yep, I did. Same idea, right? That was uh, just, yeah. uh, Justin Ro- No. Kevin Rose. Kevin Rose. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, Kevin Rose. Yeah, Dig, one of the most popular podcasts in its day um dignation and mm-hmm. um they just that kind of flamed out on them you know that reached this peak of frenzy and they got they couldn't those two guys i forget the other guy's name did you say it kevin rose and there was oh, another there guy was. anyways all they would do is get on and talk about it. they would they would read five news stories and just talk about it yeah they did some live appearances they were super popular and then oh alex Albrecht. yeah there we go Anthony Rainer. yeah coming in clutch right they just, whew, they were just gone one day, whew, just as quickly as it had come, it had gone. So goodbye, stumble upon, if you were using that. I still submit to dig. Uh, I still submit this podcast to dig. Do you really? Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's one click on YouTube. So well, yeah, it's true. 
you know, it's not like it, ta- it takes much, but I used to, I used to go to stumble upon and then I, something weird happened where I couldn't get the feed in there or something. And I was just like, ah, oh, screw it. It's not, it's not worth it. So, um, Mike, where are you doing your cloud storage these days? Because I think we're on the, I think we're on the cusp of another cloud storage war that could be coming up. When you think about where you store, not backups, but just where you're storing your music files and photography stuff, wh- wh- where are you doing that? At? So all of my document files are Dropbox. My photos are uh, the Apple photo library and music is all streamed on Spotify and everything else that I have music wise is stored locally here on hard drives. Um, But we use Spotify for all of our music. So between Dropbox and Apple music, a little bit of Google drive, if it's business related. So if it's upshot, you know, that's through the Google business apps, that's all through OneDrive. And then for work at Carson, it's OneDrive. Okay. So are you, are you paying? Them. I'm literally using pay, all of them. <laughs> are you paying personally for any of the uh, any of those services? All of them, I think. <laughs> oh, really? I think I'm paying for Dropbox. I'm paying for two different business accounts on Google, and which isn't that expensive. I think it's like five dollars a user or fifteen dollars okay. a month, maybe something like that. Um, and then for Apple, it's only like two dollars a month for the plan I have. And how it's many? How much storage big. do you get for that? Probably Ooh, not a lot. Say like, 200 no, gig. 500 gig. Okay. Something like that. That's still yeah. pretty good if it's yeah. that much. Everybody's about the $10 for 10 ter- you know, $10 a month. Let's say $120 a month for a terabyte. That's kind of, there's some variations of that and you can find some cheaper plans. But basically, I think Amazon announced this week, they just picked it up to two terabytes. So now two terabytes for 120 bucks. I, I, I kind of think others are going to maybe follow. So you might want to, if you are paying for your cloud storage somewhere and you got a lot of it, and if you, you know, if you're pushing it right to the one terabyte limit, um, you might want to th- look through or kind of keep your eye on what's going on with cloud storage. Cause I think you may be able to, here's the pain, right though. So I have it at Google. Let's say I've got one terabyte at Google. I'm paying the same price. I could get twice that at Amazon. Then I got to move it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> See, but it's not that hard to move it if you're just on one machine. You just drag and drop over to the new app. Yeah, but that's a lot of bandwidth, my friend. Yeah, true, gotta, depending on how much you have. That's yeah, true. you got to bring it down photos. and put it back up. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So, you know, they kind of get you locked in on some of those where now, you know, again, back to our early discussion about bandwidth. If I have a one terabyte limit and I'm going to move these things, it's going to take me a month or so to get it all moved. And it's going to consume bandwidth every single second. I mean, it is one of those, as we get bigger and bigger and bigger file stores in the cloud, moving off of those is not just like, oh, I'm just going to transfer it across my local network anymore. Yeah, right. You know, I'm going to move it from one home server to another. No, you're not. You're, you know, and it just, it's becoming, you know, when, when crash plan and that made its announcement last year, uh, pricing change, Mike Howard just went through the roof. Uh, in like, I can't, you know, you can't trust them and this is evil. And I didn't really understand at the time, you know, it's kind of like, Mike, just move. But Mike has an enormous amount of storage. And, you know, I just recently changed over to Backblaze from, from Crash Plan. Eh, Crash Plan's doing some weird stuff and it just wasn't working right. So, Mike, I think I said on the show here a couple, maybe even two months ago, I was making the moves, move over to Backblaze. Yeah, because that's what got me interested in it. I think, or I think we found it the same time. Relatively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, I started moving data and it takes a while. And I have it like a terabyte and a half. I know. That's my thing too. I'm, I'm moving over two, 2.5 terabytes and it's taken months. I can't imagine what he had to go through. Mike Howard, I mean, he's got, what, 15 terabytes, do you say, of stuff? It's going to take over a year. Yeah. yeah, it could take a long time. And, you know. And, what, I, and, you know, what happens when that goes out in between then, you know? So for him, it's a big deal. Yeah. And how do you verify that all the files have come across? And, I mean, I mean, it's a big nightmare. Ken says in the chat room, um, there was a service where you could transfer directly between services. Yeah. And I think it was, uh, oh, boy, what was the name of that? There were a couple cloud-based. Not always free, and they didn't have everything. And, uh, you know, in this case, uh, I, I'm pretty sure they were only cloud services like Google and they didn't cover some of the backups. Uh, they may have gotten better. I haven't looked at them in a while, um, but still something. Yeah. Mover.io says Tony, man, Tony is on the, he is on the, uh, 
He's on, on it. The, he's on the answer wagon today. He's always good at that. Mover.io was, the, I think, didn't we interview them? Might have even interviewed Mover? them. Yeah. Did we? I think I did. But maybe not you. This could have been. Maybe pre, not me. Yeah, I don't this think could I have been pre. This could have been uh, pre. Pre. pre <laughs> um, they're not free. Uh, they're they're charging out there. I wonder what their services um, are now. There may be some free free moves, but I th- it's something considering. Like I, I don't think it's common for the average guy to have that nailed down. Like, okay, how am I going to move from Google to OneDrive, or how am I yeah, going to move yeah. from my backups from Backblaze to CrashPlan? Um, I did get in the month, you know, my bandwidth's down so much now because everything transferred over. I was able to get about 1.5 terabytes in a, oh, let's say 35 or 40 days. It was not quite a month, but it was just a little bit over getting that over there. I was pleasantly surprised my April bill on Backblaze for that. Of course, April's going to be smaller because I all the data wasn't there. $2.50 was my, for, you know, let's just say it's less than a terabyte. Right. Okay. Oh, it's not too bad. No. So everything is there. My May bill, six dollars. Still not bad. One point five. Still not bad at all. Six no. bucks. Um, I don't real. I rarely touch it. I'm coming off that Moro, you know, that Moro data device, which caches smartly caches everything, so it keeps everything I'm using local, and only sends it to the cloud if there's a change or it, you know if it needs to be updated for some reason. But I'm not ever, you know, I'm pulling back whatever I need. If it's local cache, it's never going to the cloud to get it. So it's that hybrid. Um, and I have a terabyte there, so I'm in pretty good shape. Like, I don't feel like a lot of my files are going to go, once they're in the cloud, I don't think I have to worry about it. A lot of that, what I'm going to use from here on out is going to stay on that Moro data box. So, um, yeah, I was I was pleasantly surprised. Like, I actually thought I was, you know, the bill would be like 25 bucks. That, would, that, yeah, I would have been worried too, but yeah. pleasantly surprised. It's always good when that happens. Yeah, no, six bucks. So I, you know, a a pretty good experiment when we think of, did you do anything with Backblaze? Did you get anything over there or? Yeah, it's still backing up. So my, my R710 is my new NAS until I stopped doing Burst and it's, it's sending stuff over there. So I, I capped it though. So in Backblaze on the desktop version, I know you don't have these controls on yours, but you can tell it exactly how much bandwidth you want to use. So I have it turned down. So I knew it was going to take a few months the way I said it. I don't let it just go full throttle. Um, so it, it'll be done here, I think, at the end of this month, backing up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and have you looked at the pricing at all? To... 60 bucks a year for me. Oh, you? Oh, because you're using the desktop client for yep, that. Right? Exactly. So yeah, yeah. which you can for the NAS, because my NAS is a Windows 10 box. So you can just use the desktop. It's unlimited for $60 a month. Not bad. Yeah, no, it's a good way to do it. So that's five dollars, uh, but still not 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 much cheaper. I mean, you're right. if you're at seven, right? Yeah, that's what it looks like, and yeah. and it may get like uh, you know it'll be interesting to see that was moving data in. Uh, I pay if I pull it back out. I mean, I pay to put a little bit in. I pay a little bit for storage. Then I pay more if you pull it, when you pull it down is when you really pay for that. You pay, you know, it the the price got really cheap. I think so it's pulling like, down is more, huh? Yeah. I think so. I have to double check. You know what? I that should, would I make should, that would make sense because you're going to put so. up a lot, but you don't right. need to pull it back. Right. Yeah. You know, I should take a look because they just changed prices too. Let's see if we've got a little price personal backup. And I'm using their B2 storage, so that's the if you're following along at home, um, that's the. And I'm using their, um, I'm using their bucket or their. Um, Oh, what do they call it? The because you create a you go in and create. Well, B two is that way, and then you create a bucket and you say, hey, "I want this bucket," and it gives you a number, and then I put that, I put that number at the in the Moro data box, and it automatically connects to it, and then starts using that bucket of storage um, to get it done. Here, let's see if I can get. You know, where are the prices when you need them? Right, that's the. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'll keep looking, but it seemed pretty reasonable. And uh, it'll be one of those things I'm going to kind of keep my eye on too, but it's that price per something. And, you know, I'm oftentimes, I don't have the discipline to sit down and try and actually figure that out. It's like, well, I'm going to get close and that's going to be good enough. Um, And we'll give it a, we'll give it a shot that way. So um, if you are, if you're struggling with crash plan uh, so far, so good on Backblaze, they've been pretty good. You can do it like Mike's doing it with the client uh, backup. And 60 bucks a year, or uh, if you want to run, if you've got more of a NAS or you want to run more, uh, more than that, you can, um, 
you can run it out through their B2 service. Give that, mm-hmm. give that a look um, as well. Hey, speaking of uh, installs, you were, uh, you've had a little project going on. Uh, Dave McCabe has been all about wireless and mesh networking on reset. If you haven't caught up on that, but you're, are you doing a little, uh, you doing a little Wi-Fi work at your place? I am. Yeah. Doing a little work. So this was all spawned because actually, so my, um, father-in-law and mother-in-law, we got them installed with a ring floodlight cam. I don't know if you looked at those. They're kind of cool. So the ring doorbells, they also make a floodlight cam that goes where any floodlight you already had installed attached to the wires. It's got the camera on it. It's Wi-Fi. Well, we got it all set up for them down at their farm and their Wi-Fi was just terrible. Like I knew about it. They were using one of my old airport expresses. So those tiny little units and it just wasn't enough Wi-Fi coverage for their entire house. So I told them, I said, Hey, I, you know, I've been looking to upgrade my Wi-Fi anyway. I will give you guys my airport extreme that I have that I've been using as an access point. I'll give you guys that one. So when I got back home this week, I, I was like, okay, now's a good time to pull the trigger. So I've been looking at these ubiquity access points and they're, they're, they're pretty nice. Uh, not necessarily the mesh networking. So they do have a mesh network solution. But so they're the Unify ones. So flat, look like a little space shuttle that you put up on your ceiling or on your wall. So this is the, the one I chose was the APAC Pro. So this has three by three MIMO which is, you know, they have four by four now, but three by three is still pretty good. Theoretical speeds, uh, I think combined, you know, they always add up the 2.4 and the five gigahertz. I think it's 1300 megabits per second compared to if you did four by four, you get to 1700, but I'm not really transferring a lot of files over Wi-Fi. If I'm down here editing movies and transferring files, this computer is hardwired in the network. So I wasn't too worried about that, but the range on these things was inc- is incredible. So before I had the airport extreme, the newest edition, the AC version and coverage on my house, I, I mean, I couldn't complain. It was actually pretty good. I got coverage everywhere. Uh, the basement was a little spotty and then outside it wasn't as far as I wanted it to be, but this one unit and it's actually pretty small. I mean, you get, this is the box and obviously the circle is, so it's, I mean, smaller than your hand and super flat. So I put this in the ceiling, uh, attached to the ceiling in my living room. And I get, I was out, I was walking around the outside of my house and it goes for a pretty long ways. And just the customizable options on the ubiquity side is fantastic. So you can install a controller if you want. So the controller is software that you can run on, on if you have like a server style computer, something that's always on the home you can run a controller, gives you a little bit more options, or they have now made it so that you can set these things up with your phone, kind of like more your traditional router access point, and then get everything up and going. So the uh, the thing I like about this, though, is that these are relatively cheap because they're just access points. I know a lot of people that get into this, they are, they, they'll get one of these and like, well, I don't have any routing options. Well, these are these are straight access points. But the amount of custom the amount of options, once you get into that controller, you can customize a bunch of different stuff. I think it can have up to four SSIDs. You can VLAN tag all of them if you want. So I've got my main network. I've got a guest network that has a VLAN tag. So it plays very nicely with my PFSense router. But you got to make sure, like if you don't have something like PFSense or a router in the background, you're gonna have to have something else doing your routing. But uh, I've been super impressed. I've had it up for about two or three days now. The amount of data it collects is very interesting. I'm not sure how that's all happening. I don't know if I didn't have the controller running, if the controller software running on my server, if I would be getting that sort of data. But it tells me what my biggest client is, um, who's using the most data, what the data current throughput is, all that stuff, which is very interesting because I'm used to only getting that if you have the router on, right? Like PFSense gives me that data, but now I'm getting it if I look at the access point and look at the controller. So kind of interesting. But yeah, this was a, and here's a pro tip. If you have already a PoE switch, so I have a five, no, eight port PoE switch in my attic because I was using it for my security cameras. Um, You could, there's two versions of this on Amazon, but you have to kind of hunt and peck for this one. This is the version without the injector. So they have a PoE injector usually with the $180 version. This is $120 without the PoE injector. So 60 bucks you save by not needing that PoE injector. So if you already have one, you can save 60 bucks. So $120 for each of these, which for the amount of power they kick out is pretty impressive. And how many did you get? Just one. Just one? And it's and it's covering, you well, say it's the covered. entire house. Nice. Now I live in a ranch a style. Outside home. too? Uh, yeah. So I, yeah. that's what I was saying. I walked around outside. It's everywhere. 
So I, I live in a ranch style, so that's upstairs. I'm in my basement and I get perfect signal down here as well. So nice. it's uh, the amount of power and all the power, you can actually customize it. So as you're going through, obviously picking your channels, but then picking the power output for each radio, there's a lot of options. It's got beam forming, so you can try and kick more people over to the 5G if that's what you want, or do more of a balanced between the two radios. And then it's also got airtime fairness, if that's something you're looking for. So if you are in a spot with a bunch of users, airtime fairness is going to help you out, kind of distribute the load throughout the people so you don't have one person that hogs all of the bandwidth. In a home, it's not going to make that much of a difference. You don't have enough users to really have one that's going to bog down the system. Um, but if you were in a school environment or e even a home, well, once my kids get older and they have devices, we could maybe turn that on and use it. So a lot of features packed in for a relatively cheap price point. They have the next level up, which is the HDs. Uh, those are expensive. Those are like $300 in access point. So these ones have actually come down in price. So the AC Pro is $120. You can get the lower end models that don't have like 5 gigahertz. You know, I don't know. Kind of hard, but actually, we might talk about this when you talk about your Bit Defender box. If you're okay with slower right. speeds, there's even really affordable versions of this. But I, I thought 120 dollars was actually pretty affordable for a powerful access point. And where'd you where'd you install it? So right in the center of my home, uh, our living room. So you've been in my house right yep. now, living room, yep. pretty much right above the sofa. Um, it's yep. right next to our ceiling fan. Super easy to install. Uh, comes with the mounting thing. Drilled a hole for me at least. My attic, I have access to it, and that obviously I'm in a ranch, so it's very yeah. easy. I uh, have this, I've posted about it. It's a super long drill bit, uh, maybe three or four feet long. It's meant to go in. You can go down the wall. Well, I just shot it straight up. I went into the attic and I grabbed it and Hannah held onto the screw down below and I pulled it and you tape the wire to the bottom, just pull it out and yep. you're all set. So it was a 10 minute install. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's very, very cool. Uh, Mark Robson in the chat room says, he wish there was a way to mute the motion on all his phones. I mute mine, my wife forgets and the dogs go nuts with the motion chime. Um, for the dollars, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I agree, Mark. So that was one thing. When it, it was kind of odd to get used to setting up that ring from our for my um, mother in law and father in law. So they all have they have they each have their own phone, and we installed it on the iMac too. And you're right, it's kind of nice that one doesn't control all of them because her, you know, he might want the alerts because he's leaving, but she's at home, so she doesn't want them on. It is nice you can do it device by device, but you're right, there needs to be another toggle for turn all off on all devices so that it wouldn't alert it. Yeah. You got chimes going on everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. And if the dogs, if it bothers the dogs, then. Yeah. Then, Which yeah. I feel bad for him now is because I, I suggested this for him. We got it all set up and all of the videos are like frame, <laughs> frame. I'm like, it's super high def. You guys are going to love it. And like, and then half the time it's like not, not connected because the Wi Fi is just so bad there yeah. that, uh, so the, uh, this weekend they're going to take back down my airport extreme and hopefully all things will be fixed. I yeah. got, I set up the airport extreme already. So all I have to do is plug it in. It's the same, you know, SSID and password. So they shouldn't have an issue with it. You know, you, everybody's going mesh. Everybody's going into the ceilings and I'm still hooked on these. You know, I have the Google on hub router, which is just a cylinder, you know, goes somewhere in the house is kind of made to look cool. And I've been running that, I don't know, a year, maybe a little bit more. It's been a good little router. It's worked out fine. I was hoping Google would do more with it than they did. Like they were, they were promising, oh, we'll be updating it all the time and you'll get new stuff. And that's been a lie. They, they haven't been. And it's okay. I mean, it's a good router and they've been updating it and stuff, but it's not bad. Well, um, I'm a bit defender. You know, I'm a Bitdefender guy, and I've been using Bitdefender for the last couple of years, and they keep pitching me on these boxes. And I bought version one, which was a little, which was a little, seriously, it was like that big. Like it was a little box that big. And it had all kinds of problems. It wasn't powerful enough. I mean, they really tried to economize on this box, and it didn't work very well. So the next version they built, I mean, this is seriously big. And this router is as big as this box. I and mean, it looks it, like the OnHub. Is it the exact yeah, same size? It's very similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if, you, if you've seen an OnHub size, it's, a, you know, a bigger version of the Amazon, you know, the, the Echo device that, uh, that we all have, the cylinder, a little bit bigger than that. Um, comes with its own app. Uh, Price-wise, it's 150 So... And you get a free year of unlimited um, antivirus with it. So you you get, got a good price because I'm showing 199. Yeah, the 199 is kind of the standard. 250 is retail. 199 Two, is where yeah. you get it everywhere else. And then they gave me a, as a customer, they gave me the 150 deal. Nice. Okay. Which is pretty cool. Um, 
And I don't, maybe I'll hunt, hunt around to see if there's a link where I can give over other people that deal. If you're interested, send me an, an email, Jim at the average guy TV. I'll see if, if you're interested in that, if you need a router, not, not a lot of people just replace the router on the rim on the, on a whim, but you know, it's got some security built into it. It's got an app, not as powerful as the on hub app on hub app was nice. I could kind of control, I could give priority to a device. I could set up port forwarding on the phone with the, with the Bitfender box. It's kind of a combination between your phone and the web. So you got a port forward on the web. You've got, and then, you know, you can, there's some limited stats on the phone if you kind of want to see okay. who's not, who's going where, but if people are, if it's blocking things, if it's doing stuff, you know, it's supposed to have all this smart intelligence to it where it's, it blocks things internally. Uh, if PCs are doing things they shouldn't be. And then of course it's got that ability to block stuff um, coming in um, as well, which is pretty cool. So it's, I've definitely have it as a, you know, gate access, all my internet's going through it. And it's definitely making sure that things aren't getting in. Interestingly enough, you know, you get a new router, it sets up everything 192, you know, 192.168.1, yep. whatever. They use the 174, uh, no, 172, 172.24, which is the same thing, private IP, can't get to it from the internet, all those other kinds of things. But I thought, oh, that's interesting that they actually picked a different one. Right. It's same thing. But it was just, it was a little bit different. See, um, I, I started out with Apple products, so I'm on the 10.0.1. Whatever. Right, right. You know, that's, I still, yeah. And even with PFSense, that's how I still run it. That's how I run everything. Wow, well, I'm just a 192. That's the kind of the way I, I got into everything, you know, 192.168. Um, so good little box, biggest. Um, uh, it seems to stay cool. I haven't had, it hasn't gone down. I can't overload it. I have 25 devices on it. It comes with unlimited Bit Defender. Oh, and it even's got a little VPN piece that comes with it. So they give you, um, they give you a VPN for your phone that gives you 200 gig a month. Um, is that right? 200 gig or 200 meg? Back to it that box, be. almost like connecting back or using an external um, service. No, using an external service um, as part of it as well. Let me look. Let me look and see what that is. Yeah, sorry, it's 200 meg, which isn't a lot, but. There's, what they're saying is like, hey, if you're in a place and you're going to do something and you absolutely need VPN, we'll, we'll take care of you. Like, use us and you can VPN out of here. That'll be enough to do whatever you need to do. Kind nice. of as a, kind of like as an emergency service. They have a paid version of it as well. If you want to, okay. if you want to jump in there, I think it's you know ten bucks a month. Um, uh, called their 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 uh, premium VPN. If you want to do it that way, there's other ways to get it done, and I I could probably tunnel back this way too. The one big major drawback. It's uh, it's it's got a hundred meg limit on it. And okay, I was just gonna say that before you went there. I just looked it up, and it has gigabit. Does it? Did it say that? It did, and it even says the Wi-Fi is fast enough for gigabit. Oh, you know it does, which is interesting. So maybe I was looking at a review from an old one. Maybe it was the original. I was one. The original. I bet it I think, was. I think we were both because I had googled it I, first, and I, I, I had found right. the original too, and I saw that it was a hundred. So I think well, this new one is gigabit. What I did, good. Well, that's good. Then there's no complaints there. There you one go. Of, one, <laughs> the speeds are yeah, good. Good enough. Well, what I I did a speed test, and I thought, oh, well, I wonder what that's going to mean for me. And it, I must never have been able on mine to get more than a hundred down. <laughs> you know, well, when I was and, testing. And I've noticed mine goes down after five o'clock. I don't know if Cox does something weird or if it's literally just everyone getting home and hitting yeah. hitting the Cox service, but. I know if I do my test between eight and like five, then I get much higher speeds. Yeah. Well, that's good. I was, uh, that's even better that uh, the, the speed's not throttled uh, in there. Um, you know, you get a cool, I get a cool little activity report associated with it on the web. Like I said, I've got about 25 devices in a little, in a little, I can go to the, you know, to the central, to the hub and say, Hey, tell me what's on my network and is it protected or not? It's also doing, security scans all the time to say I could probably I could probably flash it I don't know if I'm gonna I could probably spend 30 bucks and get a new one yeah <laughs> you know so I'm well, trying it to might not even be that big of an issue you know yeah no I, I yeah I I I don't really I don't know I should probably replace it right it's just one of those things maybe when I move um, Although there, there's China's way into all the United States homes. Just a simple plug that we have plugged into our wall that's sitting back. It's phoning home. 
sending oh, all of our credentials and everything. It's hijacked everything. I thought it was actually. just turning my lamp on and off. My it's, bank account got hacked. It's gone. You know? Yeah, it's all gone. Um, but it's been interesting. The kids, uh, nobody has complained. I was just going to ask you. So family, same, are they getting any sort of errors, blocks? No, nope, same. S- I use the same SSID password and password, and it just they came on. I can see when they've. And been probably almost here. didn't even know that you switched. No, no, nobody, nobody said anything, and I forgot to tell them. Like, oh, hey, I put a new router in, and they're like, no, that's just, it just works. Yep. So, uh, it's been interesting. I'm going to continue to monitor it. it. There's a lot. All of a sudden, you kind of, you know, if you're a security guy, there's a lot of stuff to look at. And you start getting crazy about, you know, do I have the most recent updates on everything? Do I, right. you know, and in some, in some, you know, on the, on the um, crypto boxes, some of those miners throw off security warnings yeah, all the time. All right? the time. So I shut it off on those. <laughs> Shouldn't, but I do. So then on the report, it says needs attention because it's not necessarily protected. It's saying oh, there's probably some things. So if you're, if you're, if you're uh, OCD, this is probably not the product for you because you're going to want to lock down every single device. You have to make some decisions, you know? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like PF Sense. Ever since I've had PF Sense, if I go and help someone with their network, I go to like log in to like a, like a Cisco, not a Cisco, like a, any consumer model Cisco, I guess, or Apple, anything like that. I'm like, where are all your options? I can't, I can't change anything. How do you customize anything in here? Because I get so used to having the in-depth detail that PF Sense gives you. Yeah, I love. No, right on. on. You know, that granularity is huge. It just creates a new set of things for me to do and worry about. Which is good. You know, we need those things. Tech guys, what what else would we do? I don't know. Mike, I'm going to throw the link to this upgrade in chat room. Uh, Let me do that real quick. Tell me, tell me what that takes you to. Tell me what the deal on that. If you, if you click on that link there, tell me. Oh, yeah. Tell me what the deal is, because if it's one ninety nine, yeah, so that must know it's me. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's giving me because mine says one forty nine because I'm a current customer. Yeah, but the sale price one ninety nine. If you are a current customer, a current Bit Defender customer, you might look on the website to see if you can get the one forty nine deal. Their unlimited antivirus is ninety nine dollars a year anyway. So for fifty bucks for me, anyways, for fifty bucks. Pick up a new router, give it a try, try some things with security. It was more of an experiment. I left the on hub in its place. It may come back. Um, so gave me uh it's worked pretty well for me. Drashton is not a big fan of Bitdefender. There's no surprise there. But uh <laughs> it's worked well for me. And um and if you uh if you got some questions on, let me know. Thought I'd let you guys know that's what we're doing. Both Mike and I trying different things on the Wi-Fi. All right, let's see if there's anything else here. Hey, uh, let's just go off. You you got some new sunglasses. It's summer. Yeah. Maybe not necessarily a tech gadget, but tell no, me. No, it's not. Of... And that's why I kind of, you know, I thought, well, it's just yeah, Jimmy. I'll, I'll talk about them. So, the yeah. so I'll just I'll show you these ones first. So these were my buddies and I broke them. So they're mine. Uh, cause I, never, <laughs> I had to buy him new ones. <laughs> so, so these are the Ray-Bans, right? Like these are classic. I mean, 150 to 200 to $250 sunglasses. And so Hannah and I both needed new sunglasses. Like you said, summer's coming up. We love sunglasses. But the problem is Hannah and I break so many sunglasses. Mm. They get in the car. We sit on them. Emmett grabs them. He breaks them. Uh, I've run them over before. Like I just, I can't, but I love solid lenses. Like polarized lenses are really big for me. Like I'm a kind of a, I mean, once I started wearing the polarized Oakleys, I just got really addicted to them, but I'm hard on my sunglasses. So I was looking for a good pair of sunglasses, relatively cheap. Um, but by accident, actually, it was through Instagram. Someone was talking about these. I found uh, Shady Rays is the name of the brand, but they look, I mean, they look identical. So Ray-Bans and Shady Rays. And the look through the lens is identical to both polarized. You get them in all different colors and everything like that. But what I liked about these, what kind of got me to buy them was their replacement policy. So their whole thing is, you know, live life to the extreme and like, we got you. So they will replace these with, uh, so you can lose them, you can break them, whatever. They'll replace two of them for just like $8 shipping. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. So they're only nice. $45 to begin with. So they're already cheaper. Um, the build quality is awesome. Um, I think just a tad under uh, Ray-Ban. 
So obviously Ray-Ban, you're going to get the highest quality. They're expensive, but for $45 metal hinges, um, I know like we're nerding out. I'm not, I'm much kind of a sunglass nerd. So no, I'm nerding out. No, I like it. But, I like it. But uh, you get your metal hinges. You got nice polarized glasses. Yeah. These are the blackout edition. Um, and then I've got the green, you can't really tell they're green reflective lenses in there, which I like. Um, I'm an, I'm and, an Amber fan myself. I okay, like Amber. So, yep. Mm-hmm. So you can get Amber, you can get mm-hmm. Hannah. We're going to get Hannah, the wood framed ones. So nice. they're actually like a wood frame. Um, and the replacement policy like lose them i can just send them a thing saying hey here's my order number from when i ordered them i lost them give them eight bucks and yeah they'll replace them if no. you if they break and they break if the lens is shattering like that they'll actually do it without the shipping so they'll wow. send you a new one because they're not supposed to break yeah i wonder so, how that's gonna uh, work i wonder if that'll work for them financially yeah they've been around for a little bit i don't know how long i think a few years and they've been doing pretty well i i waited till someone else had grabbed them before i grabbed them because you know you can never trust those like things you see on instagram uh, mm-hmm. But it was actually a close friend of mine that said, no, I really like right. them. So yeah. <laughs> I got them and I was, it didn't feel ripped off. I got Hannah a pair too, and she loves them. So I did put a link in there and I'll copy it in here. Cool. Yeah. Put uh, it in the, full put it in the show notes. I mean, it is a referral link. Yes, it is. A referral Good. Link. Yeah. No, you should, you should do that for sure. And I, I don't think I get like anything for it, but I was make, just sure, like, oh. make sure I get a link for that router to, for that access point in your, in the show notes too. The one you uh, talked about earlier. Ubiquity. Oh yes, I will yeah. Yeah. Make sure that gets in the show notes. But yeah, no, you know those. It's interesting when you find those kinds of. I can't wear those kinds of sunglasses because I'm blind. Plastic ones. Right. Yeah, I'm blind. Oh, non-prescription. Right. I need. Gotcha. I need them. And and finding someone who will make. I mean, you can go like you can go to places and they'll make prescriptions that kind of look like that. It's I, glasses are such such a ripoff. I'll be honest with you. They, they are. They make they cost fifty dollars to make and they charge four hundred dollars for them. I mean, it's the mafia, right? Yep, They're, and that's what I liked about these. They actually felt like the price I was paying was like, yeah. okay, forty five dollars. That's probably a reasonable price for polarized lenses, solid making. Yeah, yeah, no, and I get so tired because because I need and I need super strong glasses because I am blind, and so it's always like I go to Shopco. That's for for folks who don't know, Shopco is like our Walmart. We have that here in the Midwest. And I love the guy. I know the doc there. And so he always does the eye exam. But I always always walk out with a $500 bill for my glasses for whatever. I have to get super thin because, you know, it has to be bent in a certain way. And if it's not that way, they're really big. And they put the coating on it. And I had to have progressives and all that other stuff, right? Yep. So this time, um, my my daughter needed glasses. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try something new. And I'd heard of this company called Warby Parker. And love Warby Parker. That's the way my glasses are too. I wear contacts, but yeah, incredible service. Log in, order five lenses. I'm sorry, order five frames. They ship them to you. Try them on at home. Get the family's advice. I took mine to work, put them on. Um, had you know, had the girls at work. How do they look? What do you think? We took, you know, we took uh, kind of bids. <laughs> Like, which one should we get? And then I ordered a pair. Now, I ordered uh, the first pair I ordered. I did the progressives, the indexed lens. They were they were $380, let us say, something like that. Still pretty expensive. Mm-hmm. A standard pair of glasses at Warby Parker, 100 bucks, which is great. Frame, lens, single, single you know, um, single prescription or single uh, vision, whatever they call that. Yep. 99 bucks, which is great. My daughter's, my daughter's prescription, 99 bucks. So... Um, I had, I had my Bose quiet comfort 35s on at work. I was messing around with trying to get the Bluetooth working. I was going to use those as my conference headphones when I'm talking on the phone. And I was, I was taking them off. It slipped out of my left hand and, uh, those things, those things have a pretty good tension. Yes. Like a spring. Once you pull them out. Yeah. Yeah. And it shot across and hit my glasses and hit, I thought I broke my nose. It hit me so hard. And there's a little metal piece on those Quiet Comfort 35s, and it dug the Grand Canyon into my into my glasses. <laughs> like I mean, one solid scratch all the way across. It was Mike. It was yeah. Uh, fortunately, not all the way, but a halfway. Like I've never scratched my glasses that bad. I have no idea how that even happened. Or it, it was like it, they must have like a diamond tip edge on the on the end, right? It's diamond tip bling. Right. Just, <laughs> right across, you know, cutting holes so I could shoot through them or something. I don't know. Anyway. Hey, now you know. Yeah, if you need to get out of your car, if you crash, just take your quiet comforts and just 
Yeah. Out of your window. No, right on. So I tried rubbing it and buffing it. No way, man. This they, it had just it had gouged into it. So I called Warby Parker, and they're like, "Hey, good news. We warranty your glasses for anything for a year." And they were like, "Just send them in, and we'll replace them." And I'm like, "Well, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm blind. I can't just send them in." So the guy's like, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. You know, that's what we have to do. And I'm like, well, I'll tell you what, I, I've only had, I've had these for a year. I'll just order a new set. I'll have two different and I can accessorize. I've never done that with my glasses ever. Yeah. Right. Why not? Why not? It's 2018. We can have two different pairs of glasses. Right. So I, I went through the whole thing, ordered the, ordered the frames, took them to work. We picked out, we, you know, my wife picked out what she liked. We picked, we decided on a frame. And then I got the email from the guy at Orby Parker. He goes, Hey, good news. Like, um, I can't replace your, your super expensive ones. Uh, the warranty will only cover a new set of single, single vision, mm-hmm. he goes, so, but we're going to send those right now. So don't, don't send anything in yet. We'll send you the single vision ones. And if those work, then you're, you're good to go and and we'll replace them that way. I'm like, okay, we'll just send them. I'm getting ready to order another pair anyway. So just, just send them. And I was getting ready to drop, you know, three fifty on another pair. So two days ago, the single, the single frame, single vision frame, whatever they are, came. Yeah. I put them on. I saw I could actually see better than I was really? seeing. Really? With the, the progressive ones. Wow. Yeah. I was like, I could have been seeing things. And so, you know, it was like, I, you could not believe. All of a sudden, I'm like, you know what? I think I can deal with $99 glasses again. Like, I don't, yeah. I'm not sure I need to go with the bifocal things. But how cool and what great service it was. And what great technology to get this, you know, shows up on your doorstep, try out the frames, great service, oh, totally. got back to me. I have no referral link for Warby Parker, but if you're in, if you're, if you want to add technology to, and great service to what you're doing from a frames perspective, man, that was, you, you add that to HelloFresh and, oh, you weren't here when we talked about HelloFresh the other. No, but I've heard a lot about it. Yeah, I've done a lot of work, dude. Changing, changing my life. Really? Yes. We are using it. Yeah, we're using it. Yeah, we are using the crap out of it. My okay. daughter loves cooking with it. We talked about it on Micah's show uh, two weeks ago. Can't, can't, can't say good enough things about what's going on at HelloFresh. Nice. Yeah. So two really cool. Show. And again, all around, you know, we're getting boxes of. I'm getting boxes of wine every other month that are showing up. You know, they're picking four bottles for me and sending them. I'm doing it every month <laughs> and they're gone at the end of the weekend. Like they don't even last, they don't even last a week. <laughs> it's like, Oh, what bottle should I have tonight? And like four nights later, they're all gone. Are you using that bright sellers or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't they even called know. me actually like, Hey, we're having a deal. You're one of our best customers. I'm like, am I one of your only customers? <laughs> well, I delayed it a week or I delayed it a month. They don't let you delay it any more than that. So oh, it was really? like, yeah, I think you get a, you can skip a month. It's not cheap. No, sixty eight for four bottles. That's not. Yeah, no, and it's not the greatest. I'm gonna cancel. We're we're gonna get this box. It's shipped already. Yeah, so I think I'll that's, probably this, call our, this is my last box. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's they're better. Good, but they're not. No, they're not that. They're good. not like worth that much. No, the bright sellers don't recommend as much. No, Hello Fresh. If you're struggling to eat meals like if you're struggling to cook meals like hello fresh can change things their ingredients mike are incredible like it's some better looking fresh vegetables than i could get at the supermarket delivered in a box that's completely recyclable i mean it's kind of amazing what they're doing that's good to hear because the one thing we had one person at work who had used hello fresh and they said the, the the ingredients weren't arriving that fresh actually that was her one oh, complaint about it no we're no, getting, you've had good luck with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're on the three. We're on the three plan, so like 120 bucks a week, which is expensive. But I tell you what, actually, I would spend that two times at B Dubs for the two of us, or for even for the three. Yeah. If I take if I take the three of us to Buffalo Wild Wings, it's 75 bucks. Right. Oh, totally. Yeah. And it's like that's one meal. So and uh, you're only paying a little bit more for three. And it and it's not even that good for you, right? Right. Exactly. Where we've just had some amazing meals. Um, you know, from a, like a Korean bowl, you know, Korean chicken bowl yep. to they have tacos. We're having flatbread. They, I mean, it's, it's, we, it's not magic and it's not cheaper, but it, it is, it's changed the way, you know, my daughter's enjoying, she preps them for us. Yeah, so we can enjoy home. that little bit of prep. 
right? Yeah, no, and you do. You got to enjoy some of the prep. Because she's probably home that. for the summer now. She is. Yeah, she'll be home through mid August. So yeah, so yeah. that's great then. If she likes to oh, and it. then you can downgrade. So you know we're doing the four person three times a week now, one hundred twenty bucks. When she goes back to school, we'll probably downgrade it. I'll be honest. We were we were doing two meals a week, and then just kind of sticking them in there. We might we might go to three. So yeah. we've got an extra run for the weekend. They're that good. Okay. Um, I'll give so, a shot. Hannah's, yeah. We've been talking about it. With the two little kids, it's hard to like, I'm not going to pay that much to pay them. You know what I mean? It's like, no. we're still going to need to go to the store to get stuff. So it's like, maybe maybe once they're older, I don't know. We'll see. You know what? So, Start on the cheat meals. So go two people, two times, and try it for a week where you just get two meals. And even just, just for, for the and I, two of you. Yeah. yeah. And then if you get, maybe you can get a date night or or on the weekend, maybe the two of you could cook it together for lunch. Yeah. On a Saturday or something sure. when, you, when you have some time. Um, but pretty cool. The cool part about it's the technology. So you can, you log into the app and you can skip infinite numbers of weeks. So if you're going to be on vacation for three or four weeks, Mark Robson saying he's on his seventh wine tour. So maybe, you know, he, and they buy, they buy wine at case cases at a time. So maybe he's gone on a wine tour for three or four weeks. Can't take hello fresh. You just skip them. When you come back, you can turn it back on. We've had fun, Mike. We'll make a meal and then we'll sit down and they're super tasty and really different. And for us, you know, we kind of gotten in a rut with our, with our meals, you know? And so here we are enjoying like fresh food <laughs> again. And we're like, God, oh, I could have been tasting things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, food has taste. This is fantastic. Holy crap. This stuff has taste. And, uh, and so we'll like, let's log in and pick the next week's. And so together we go through, they have eight in the menu and then you pick the two or three. Um, that's been cool. I mean, that's been, that's been really, really cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give yeah. it a shot no. as a quick update. So Shady Rays does do prescription lenses and they're right. super cheap cool. and they have the same replacement policy, which is we'll replace them no matter what. What's super cheap. So, um, so single vision tinted, not polarized. Okay. So just a tinted sunglass, kind of the cool look 58 bucks. Oh, Wow. 58, that's with your single vision subscription. And then they still have the same replacement policy. Lost or broken, they'll replace it. Just pay this at $8 shipping. If you want to go polarized, which I just, I, I'm, yeah. I, yeah. I'm such a fan, that adds $55. So they're 103. That's not too bad. I'm going to pay that same thing at Warby Parker, to be honest with you. Yeah, so 103. Um, and then amber? you get the replacement policy. And they're polarized? They're polarized. Okay. And the how long is the warranty on those? You can do amber, you can do any color you want. Okay. How long is the uh, the policy on this? The... I think forever. Oh, well, nothing's forever, but uh, it's it's there's no end. Uh, until they go out of business. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> okay, well that might be uh, because I, I like those. Hmm. I was gonna order a pair, a new oh, pair. Oh wait. Oh, here we go. Prescription warranty. All frames are covered under our lifetime craftsman warranty, but the shady rays loss or broken warranty does not apply to prescription orders. Okay. Never mind. Wah, wah, wah. Well, no. See, they say that, and then down below they have the free lost or broken replacements. They should take right. that logo off. A little confusing. You got to read the fine print. That's well, okay. I mean, that's that, that's a good. I, but I, you, you can know. still, for fifty eight dollars, right, get a pair of prescription sunglasses. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, I ordered a uh, one of the frames that I ordered from Warby Parker. I actually thought would make a good pair of sunglasses. It was a big, dark frame, and then just I think I'm just gonna throw prescription I, the plan was just to throw a prescription lens in there and yeah work so so amber um, amber adds a little bit yeah that always everything no, just adds on no, the 148 okay. with amber so polarized prescription lenses yeah well it's a little bit different you know those lens the manufacturers of those lenses the prescription sunglasses ones are a, a couple extra steps so it costs a little bit oh more. yeah they can crank out those regular lenses on a robot so they, yep. you know, just, just crank them, yeah. grind them down and crank them. Well, cool. All right. Well, the link will be in the show notes if you want to check that out. And uh, some some cool, not necessarily tech related, but we covered it at the end of the show. So um, it's uh, some good, some good stuff. I Now I'm kind of craving some wine. I might have to, uh, <laughs> I have to go get some for the post show. Yeah, there we go. Go grab some. <laughs> as, as we go in there. Well, uh, we'll remind everyone uh, as you're, as you're thinking about, um, as we're thinking about the post show, just a couple, just a couple of reminders. One, if you want to support us on Patreon, you can do that. 
Um, I'm, I am changing it. Uh, we had Patreon out there as a crypto at the end. I'm just going to make it available on Patreon each week. You don't have to be a subscriber if you want to catch the crypto post show. Uh, you can just head out there. Head out to theaverageguy.tv slash support or theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon. Either one of those gets you out there. We post the video and the audio uh, when I have it of the post show available for you on there. It's free. But if you want to subscribe to us and support the show, you can do that for as little as a dollar. If you got any comments, uh, feedback, anything you want to send to me, Jim at theaverageguy.tv. Find me on Twitter at Jay Collison. Lots of great conversations uh, going on on Twitter. Follow me and then go follow Tony Rayner. He might be the most interesting Twitter person out there ever. No, Tony, agree. I don't know how you do it, dude. I just don't know how he does it. There's He's interesting. Maybe that's why he does it. So <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's so good at it, because he's actually interesting. Because he's actually interesting. Yeah. Yeah, they've uh, been great. I just had a talk right before this show, actually. I'm getting a riding lawnmower this weekend oh, nice. and uh, put out on Twitter. And, of course, it's the guys from the podcast, everyone, Dennis, Rainer. Uh, I'm going to forget people, but uh, I'm going to forget a lot of people because there are a lot of responses. They were all chiming in on, hey, look at this brand. Look at this brand. This brand uses these motors. It was awesome. So you guys are great on Twitter. I really appreciate you guys helping me out. I can always count on you guys when I have a question. Nice. No Husqvarna robot mower? No. You know, for the price I'm spending, actually, I should probably look at if those have come down in price because they're they're pretty expensive. But Memorial Day sales, that's why I'm doing it this weekend. Okay. Uh, Home Depot. Has some great, uh, nice, great deals. Nice. So. What are you gonna? What what brand are you gonna get? Uh, it's either gonna be a John Deere or a Cub Cadet. So JD, those JD. are two good brands. They are two good brands. JD. The only reason that's one's coming out a little bit more for me right now is that you uh, for Memorial Day they're throwing in the free two hundred dollar like the trailer that you can pull behind the riding lawnmower to like put you know mulch in or dirt in. Did an acreage appear on your property while I was after yeah, I left? Well, is I mean, that... you, it's a lot of law to mow. But that front yard, the backyard is not a lot of law to mow. The backyard takes me no time at all. It's that front yard, and it wraps all the way around. I got I got three streets, so I am on a weird U shaped lot. So I've got a ton of sidewalk and grass. So you do. I'm just kidding. I, it's only ha well, it's it's about half an acre. But how great would it be to have a robot lawnmower? Uh, I know. I should probably think about it. Mowing it down. I'd, I'd even come over and help you put the put I've the got a lot of down. idiot kids in my neighborhood, though. They'd probably come steal it, get their finger chopped off or whatever. Well, first of all, the blades aren't that big. True. And then second of all, it screams like a Furby when you turn it, it upside down. Yeah, but then you just drop it, and then it would be broken. I don't know. That's we'll see. Uh, hold on. Robot mower. Let's let's just hold on. Let's just let's see. Oh, they're still pretty expensive. How much are they? <laughs> Well, uh, you could get them as the, the, the low end, the smaller ones, you could get for as little as 1500 Oh, that's cheaper than what I'm paying for the writing. Yeah, that's on Amazon. That's the Husqvarna AM3, uh, AM310. Let me take a peek at oh, this. Oh, Jim. Shoot, you're oh, changing up the whole uh, thing now. Let's hold on. Um, how, many, how, much, how much lawn space do you think you have? My lot is half an acre. My house isn't that big of a mm. thing. So maybe half, maybe a quarter of an acre. Ooh, say quarter. It's the very first thing it says quarter of an acre working area means auto mower can do more. So it, it would mow up to a quarter of an acre. But it has to know the whole space of my lot, I bet. Well, Wait, does it, it say, it's about to put the wire down for Does it say lot or does it say mowing area? Uh, it says quarter acre working area means auto mower can do more. Huh. I don't know what that means. Fifteen hundred. Hold on. Let's go back to the more a more expensive one. Okay. What is it going? Because I'm I'm about to spend eighteen hundred dollars. Oh. So, so for eighteen hundred, what can I get? The next up, the next step up is the three fifteen model. It's fit. It's sixteen hundred. We'll say fifteen ninety nine. And let's see if it's got a. Uh, well, this also says quarter of an acre. I still think that might work though. Dude. I seriously, I would come help you install the, the, uh, cause you know, you got to put the stuff the wire around, down, the wire down and we would need to build a little robot gate so it could, it, could, it would have a go place under. to go through to go under so I could get, or I would just yard. have, I think you can also switch it. I would just lift it, put it in the backyard, put it in the front yard. Yeah. I think that's an option. I think I read on that cause there were some uh, people that, okay. yeah, yeah. So, oh, man. and you don't have, you don't, you're, you don't have a steep, you don't have any steep hills no, on there or anything very flat yeah the 315 would get you 1600 
So it's not, it's a little over your budget, but uh, what you're getting 16, at. No, 18 is what I'm going to spend on this writing. Yeah. You might want to look because it, it also, let's see, there, um, you got to get a, an install kit that comes with it. That adds a little bit of the price. So there's a small, medium, and large install kit. The small one adds about $100 to the price, and then it goes $120, $180 to the price. So take a look at those. Take a look. A little bit more, but you don't need to, to, um, you know. It's all about lows. Like Tony says, a lot less maintenance for the robot. Yeah. He says, riders overkill for a fourth quarter acre. I agree, Tony, but the only thing about mine is, like, it's the bagging. Because I have to bag all the time, and that's two three stripes on those tiny because i have a tiny push mower and i've got to stop empty go two more three stripes stop and, you know it's just it takes me it's the time it's not really the i'm not like oh man i'm just so tired it's not the it's not the effort it's the time i just it would save me so much time it takes me four and a half hours to do my entire lawn edging mowing and by the time i clean it like blow everything off four and a half hours that's just, that's a lot of time yeah for mowing free shipping on amazon right now <laughs> Um, I think this might be it. It comes with got, the starter kit. Does it? Yeah, yes. look into it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dude. man. Dude, Husk Varna. I think this might How great have been would a that be? Changer. How great would that be? Robot lawnmower. Like you could put stickers on the top, like touch me, you die. But just run that thing like stored in the backyard and then just run it at night. Yeah. You know, if you run it at two in the morning. Nobody, uh, there's no, there's no, your kids aren't, no, no kids are out there at two in the morning. All right. Well, you think about that we'll rem- while you're thinking about that, we'll remind everyone, of course, the average guy.tv platform, both web and media hosting powered by Maple Grove Partners. If you want secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from the, the people that you know and you trust, and they, those are the people who trust Husqvarna robot mowers. Yes. And you know, I'm really jonesing for one of those myself. Like I just don't have the right yard for it, but I really want one of those bad you can uh, head over to maplegrovepartners.com. Plans start as little as $10 a month. You uh, don't forget, you can also listen to the, you can listen on our app that we have available, both Android and iPhone. We thank LastPass for their sponsorship of the show. They've been great sponsors and great supporters. If you haven't tried out LastPass, I use the heck out of my LastPass. Uh, head over there and uh, you can start with free plan. I think, I think an annual plan now is 24 bucks. So give it a shot and uh, well worth your time and your effort while you're over there. Let's see if there's any thing else all right i think that'll do it for the end of the show uh we thank you guys for coming out we'll do a little crypto in the post show thanks for coming out we'll let you know next week if mike has bought the robot yeah i'll let you know it's gonna be one of these two so all right all right well that will say good night everybody